As the summer slipped away, I spent my time training and working on another big cartoon drawing of all the wrestlers, this time for Vince. I couldn't help but feel indebted to him. I constantly phoned Davey down in yes. Florida, but all Diana could tell me was that he was out with Jim somewhere. Mm -hmm. I finally tracked Jim down. Just oh, hours. Jim Neidhart. Yeah. Whew. Ooh. We know through Total Divas the kind of hard fucking living going down in Florida. <laughs> that panhandle. Jim Neidhart, ladies and gentlemen. What a... What a... <laughs> I finally tracked him down hours before I was leaving for England and was shocked when he told me he'd just taken Davy and Diana to the airport. Davy was high as a kite when he caught his flight, Jim said, because he'd been up all night smoking crack with him. Yes. You got that? Yes. Hashtag smoking crack. I'm just going to say this. You have no idea. Jim told me that Davy had You have a no idea yet. Oh, fuck. You have Diana in the back pocket. And I purposely did not read this book. Good. Good. For this reason. Good. Because I, for once, I'm going to react to a dramatic reading. Yes. Uh, Jim said, okay, uh, Jim told me that Davey had a gorilla on his back and he was worried about him. I wish Jim would take a good look at himself. I couldn't have been more disappointed in Davey and feared he would end up making us both look bad. I remembered Vince asking me back in Binghamton if I was sure I could go on last in the main event. I could promise you nobody will be able to follow us, I'd said. And when I asked, he's talking about a trial run I did in Binghamton, mm -hmm. New York with Brett and Davey that did not go well. And when I asked Vince whether he wanted me to run the finish past him, he told me, I don't want to know, surprise me. I'd never ever heard him say that to anyone else before or after. But now I truly had no idea what surprises the match was likely to have in store. When I arrived in London, Hundreds of fans poured out of the hotel lobby to chant my name in the streets. I sat out to find Davey, but he was off somewhere with Diane and his family. I didn't see him until the required entrance rehearsal at Wembley Stadium the night before the show. When I asked him why he hadn't returned my calls all summer, he wasn't able to look at me in the eye. He fessed up that he'd been smoking crack yes. with Jim for weeks. <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh. <laughs> well, Brit, I was smoking crack for weeks. <laughs> Brit, Brit. Mr. Hitman, I've been smoking crack oh, for weeks. <laughs> what a business. You couldn't reach me because I was smoking crack. Rename the show Smoker Slam. <laughs> summer smoke, summer crack. Right. He's smoking crack. Why is he smoking crack? Why is he smoking crack? He's Davy Boy Smith. <laughs> Whatever. You know, fuck that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> He's been I don't know what, dude. I know, seriously. I'm going to read this line again, okay? <laughs> oh, this is so bad that I'm laughing. I, there's just something so, like, contemptuous. Like, I'm laughing out of contempt. I know, you know? I know. He fessed up that he'd been smoking. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, because, you know what it is? Like, it's the same reason why I get, I get such a kick out of this, out of Diana's book. It's because, like, it, it it's like, it's so insane. <laughs> you've got... <laughs> You've got everything right here in the right. palm of your hand, and you are doing everything you can in your everything in your absolute power as a human being to fuck it up. <laughs> Quote He fessed up. <laughs> okay, I gotta do this. This is ridiculous, and I can't get through this. This never happens. Okay. He fessed up that he'd been smoking crack with Jim for weeks. And was now terrified. <laughs> Crack will do that to you, Bob. you think Brett feels, you fucking asshole? He'd gone back to being the same helpless kid I'd rescued from Dynamite ten years earlier. Trust me, Davey, and I'll do all I can to get you through tomorrow, okay? He nodded, and I sat him down for a crash course, going over and over our match. Course. <laughs> going over and over our match, and then cooking smack for him. <laughs> And making him recite the moves back to me. Hip toss. Suplex. <laughs> Amba. <laughs> Tope con hilo. Tyson. Moonsault. Tyson. Hitman. <laughs> Shit, man. Brit. You know, Brit, you put S in front of Hitman, you got my exact opinion of you. <laughs> I'll do 
<laughs> Brett, Brett, okay. Brett is trying to reach him for weeks and weeks. Davy finally I'm smoking crack. <laughs> Davy, Davy finally, yeah, finally faces the music and confesses heart to heart. Brett forgives him, sits him down. Davy looks him in the eye and says, "If you put an S in front of Hitman, you got my exact opinion of you." Right to his face. Think about you. Know, I gotta say, think about 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 Davy that I've I like you know based on this and. Based on, on Diana's book, it's like it, he seems to be someone who, when he fucks up, he fully admits it. Right, right. He doesn't he like keeps, being this guy. No, but he keeps fucking up. That's but right. he, but he has like he's like he takes full responsibility every time he, he makes a mistake. Right. Yep. Totally. Which is kind of like okay, okay, that's good, but you know, fix yourself. Just makes it more sad, is what it really does. It really does. <clears throat> uh, going over our match and making him recite the moves back to me. It was now completely up to me to save our match. The following day, we arrived at Wembley early. The sun hit high in an overcast sky, but there was a collective sigh of relief because it looked like it wasn't going to rain. Shortly before the show was to start, I was summoned to a meet and greet with a room full of fans, most of whom had been given British Bulldog t-shirts as part of a promotional contest. There was one little boy wearing a Hitman t-shirt confidently arguing to some of Davy's grown-up supporters that I was going yes. to win. As he held his dad's hand, he politely asked me whether I could give him my glasses when I came out. I tussled his hair and said, if I can find you, they're yours. In the dressing room, Hawk gave me a sour smile as he casually popped three placidils into his mouth and hung his tongue out where they stuck just long enough. Well, I'm going to do some drugs right in front of you. (laughs) That's okay. That's okay. We're going to throw your way around, too where they stuck just long enough for him to yeah. wash them down with black coffee. <laughs> I guess Rocco, what the fuck is, what is this? Locker room, what is this? Everyone's high. Is this like a Thomas Pynchon novel? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? I guess Rocco, the talking dummy, was getting it's to him. Fear, fear and loathing in Wembley Stadium. Correct, correct. Even more than I thought. Why would why anyone would do that was beyond me. I liked Hawk and sensed in that instant that he was at some... Well, I don't like you. <laughs> And sensed in that instant that he was at some personal breaking point on his own road to self-destruction. <laughs> Fucking Brett. Jesus Christ. All right. Once the show started, I worried and waited, fearing that the other wrestlers would run too long, leaving me and Davey with not enough time to tell our story. If we ran out of time, it would be my tough luck, since if Davey beat me in a short match, it could ruin me in England. One positive note was that the referee was Gorilla's boy, Joey Morella, who, in my opinion, was the best WWF ref. I knew he'd do his best to help me communicate with Davey. <laughs> sure he said that five years later, too. Hmm. I was amazed to see Hawk, who was nearly out on his feet, climb onto a rented Harley Davidson and wobble all the way out to the ring behind Animal and their manager, Paul Ellering, who were also on bikes. Not that this should be recognized as some kind of amazing feat in itself, but the truth is that it was, considering that he was barely conscious from bell to bell. The fact that Hawk, with the help of his opponents, Mike Rotundo and Teddy Biasi and of Animal, somehow had a match is a testament to all of them, but it mattered little since Hawk upped and quit the next day, leaving Animal to fend for himself. Warrior and Randy had a decent world Seems title match. Shoot for a while. Oh, really? Yeah, I remember. Animal I remember did. That. Yeah, like Crush was the like kind of the the like little added member of the LOD. I remember I remember seeing um, uh, pictures of that in in uh, one of the after mags. He was painted up. Them, like, I don't think he was painted up, but he just he teamed with Animal to replace Hawk. Wow. Never knew that. For a time, before before Animal left and took his hiatus. Warrior and Randy had a decent world title match, but their ongoing angle never made much sense and only got more convoluted when Ric Flair, managed by Mr. Perfect, was the one who cost Warrior the belt. The sky was a beautiful purple-blue by the time our match was called. Davey went out before, make, before me to a huge ovation. I was banking on my sense that the British fans truly loved me, but would feel they had to support their fellow countrymen. To all the fans watching via satellite, I'd be a huge underdog. Today, I'd break all their hearts and win their undying loyalty. I was betting my career on it. The aisle was so long that my usual entrance music played twice. As I made my way to the ring, the picture of confidence in my leather ring jacket, English football horns trumpeted through a crowd of all ages while Union Jacks fluttered in the soft breeze. I was eased by the sight of numerous pink and black signs, and I had the distinct sense that God was with me as I silently vowed to show Vince, Davy, and the world how good I was. As I stood nose to nose with Davy, he appeared to be every bit as determined, both of us unflinching warriors refusing to give way before battle. With a thunderous bulldog chant reverberating through the stadium, I unbuckled the belt 
held it up to my lips and kissed it. I handed it to Joey, who held it up to the crowd, while I dropped out to the floor to give my sunglasses away. To our mutual surprise, I was able to place them on the little boy I'd promised them to earlier. His dad smiled, impressed that I was a man of my word. Back in the ring, Joey gave Davey and me the rules, the three of us momentarily awestruck by the size of the crowd. We pushed off. And the fact that there are supposedly rules. Yeah, there's that. Awestruck at that. There's that, too. We pushed off with Davey looking strong and serious. The crowd was ours, and the bell sounded. At first, Davey outmaneuvered me with simple and realistic wrestling, but after only a few minutes, he was breathing hard. Brett, I'm fucked, Davey panted as I had him clamped in a side headlock. I can't remember anything. Davey, just listen to me. I'll carry you. Joey shot me a worried look. This would be the test of my career. So that's how it was, me calling out every single high spot for Davey, sometimes even the necessary facial expressions, helping him conserve what little stamina he had for a comeback that was still more than 30 minutes away. Think about that, boss. Think about your anxiety being your opponent gassing and having to, the art of calling spots so the match doesn't appear to be stalled. Yep. With the whole purpose of preserving the comeback gas. That's the art of wrestling right there. That's crazy. Every time Davey picked me up, I went up like a feather. He went up for me like a full refrigerator. (laughs) I made sure I didn't overdo it as a heel, knowing the fans would forgive me in the end when I lost. 25 minutes into the match, I locked Davey in a sleeper hold, and the crowd immediately got behind him, cheering Mm -hmm. him on to revive himself as he crawled to the ropes, gasping for air. I snapped a beautiful boot straight into his face, grazing the tip of his nose like I'd snapped it hard with my finger to wake him up. The drama built layer upon layer as every move that came followed a logic that never detracted from the story. I hit Davy with my whole arsenal, finally locking on the sleeper again. As he sank to his knees, I called the spots into his ear, and he rose up to his feet with me on his back. Staggering backward, he rammed me into the corner with all his weight, nearly snapping my neck in half on the top rope for real. But there was no time to sell as I slapped on the sleeper one more time. Again, Davy sank to his knees as Joey muttered, Do you guys hear that crowd? This is unbelievable. (laughs) That's cool. A little bit of interaction there. We went into a beautiful sequence of moves, ending up with an old Heart Foundation bulldog spot, where a groggy Davy went for a press slam but lost his balance and accidentally crotched me on the ropes to the roar of the crowd. I so d- that wasn't a fuck-up? No. An wow. old Heart Foundation bulldog spot, he says. Good. Then that's an incredible... Because I, I thought he... I thought he... Lost him. Up. Yeah. Yep. I carried him as far as possible, and now Davy took over for his long-awaited comeback. I called out all his big moves for him, and after I'd taken them all, Davy dragged me to my feet by my singlet straps, revived enough to signal with his hands that it was time to finish me off with his running power slam. Always incredibly strong, Davy easily twirled me over his shoulder and charged across the ring, flattening me to the mat for the one, two. But this time it was me who astounded the crowd by barely kicking out. Mm-hmm. Clutching his face, a tearful Davy only half-feigned amazement as he finally realized that I'd put together a masterpiece. I dragged myself to the ropes and fell out of the, to the apron. Davy suplexed me back in, but I dropped behind him, gripped him tightly around the waist, and jerked him into a perfect German suplex. Yes. Oh, it's so fucking good. This time, Davy kicked out. As we got to our feet, I attempted a front suplex, but Davy didn't budge. Instead, he blocked it, lifted me straight up, and dropped me painfully hard on the top corner strut, nearly castrating me. A half inch over, and the match would have ended right then and there. Davy climbed up to the top corner. And before he had time to think about it, we did a standing vertical suplex off the top, crashing to the mat below. This was considered the most high-risk, breathtaking move in the business at that time. As Davy draped an arm over me for the one, two, I kicked out again at the last possible second. The crowd was stunned, but they'd only seen the appetizers. The best was yet to come. Mm-hmm. After a double clothesline, both Davey and I lay writhing in a heap as Joey started a 10 count. If the fans only knew that I'd come up with this move one night at about 3 in the morning, I'd woken Julie up and somehow managed to talk her into lying on the floor next to the bed to see whether it would work. Oh. Oh. His wife. How about that? Now I entwined my leg through Davey's, and before anybody quite knew what I was up to, I twisted him over into my sharpshooter with no escape, right in so the middle good. of the ring. God damn so it. So good. The crowd went nuts as I fought with all my strength to stop Davy from crawling to the ropes, dragging me behind him. When he reached them, there was an explosion of relief. Nobody had ever escaped the sharpshooter before. As I dragged myself to my feet exhausted, I could see my invisible banana peel lying in the middle of the ring. Joey kept muttering, unbelievable. The time had come to break the hearts of all my fans and forever change my destiny. Let's go mm-hmm. home, I called as I slammed one last lifter into Davy's chest, rocking him hard enough to send sweat flying into the air. I squeezed his wrist as the cue to reverse me into the ropes. Look at that. That's, that's the cue. Squeeze that's the, the cue. Squeeze the wrist. How about that? 
and I dove over him for a sunset flip. The simplest move in wrestling. But instead of falling backwards, we did the old Leo Burke finish. Davy fell forward, hooking my legs with his arms, collapsing on top of me and pinning me beautifully. One, two, three. We did it. I did it. There was a deafening roar as Rule Britannia played, and Joey gave Davy the IC belt. After 37 grueling minutes, it wasn't 37 minutes, Brett. I'm sorry. I mean, just, maybe, maybe from the time, like including entrances and stuff, but maybe. I know it's like, what, like 27? Is it yeah, 27 he, minutes? Yeah, he always talked about <clears throat> this match like it was 40 minutes. I lay on the mat, feigning being heartbroken, but in fact, I was elated. I was also exhausted and in considerable pain, but I knew that the handshake at the end would top it all off, the last detail in this drama. I made out that I was too pissed off to shake Davy's hand. I'd planned all of this with Davy, but it became painfully obvious to me that he'd forgotten all about it. I desperately tried to make eye contact, but he was oblivious um, as Diana climbed into the ring crying. I can only assume for real. I'm thinking, come on, Davy, look at me, and we'll make them all cry, but Davy never caught on. Instead, he was trying to milk the crowd. I was thinking, um, I was thinking, the drama is with me. Not them. For fuck's sake, please look at me, Davy. <laughs> After too many attempts, I gave up and just walked over and shook his hand. He'd completely missed one of the tiny moments that can make it all more real. But what could I do? The torch had been passed. Everything mm. hurt. Even my fingers were sore. When I got back to the dressing room, most of the boys had already left on the bus. But the ones who'd seen the match seemed blown away. I understood the art of losing and the power of sympathy. I knew that in the weeks to come, it would be me who was over. Over more than Warrior, Savage, Flair, Ooh. Davey. All of them have been excellently executed. I've wow. always believed this was my greatest match, especially because I'd carried Davey all the way through it without anyone being the wiser. My dad would tell me later that it's one thing to have a great match, but it's another thing to have a great match in front of 80,000 people. Despite knowing it was all a work, and one that I had orchestrated, a deep sense of sadness came over me hours after the match. Losing the IC belt seemed all too real to me. Later that night, I limped into the crowd hotel bar, crowded hotel bar, where most of the wrestlers' fans and office were celebrating after the show. Vince came up to me and told me it was I was the greatest athlete he'd ever seen, mm. and that he only wished he had one ounce of the athletic ability I had. Jack Lanza and Shane McMahon told me that I had the greatest match of all time, and that they'd both had goosebumps up their arms watching it. I was surprised to see Pat Patterson back, but there he was gushing all over it. What a masterpiece it was, especially as I'd pulled it off without any help from him. I told him that I was glad to see him back, and that I'd felt he was unfairly railroaded during the sexual misconduct allegations. By the time I limped to my room and called home, the pain of the match was setting in. Julie barely spoke yeah. to me, handing the phone to Blade, whose voice lifted my spirits, but only until he said he missed me, which made me feel sadder. Dallas and Jade were both very emotional, while Beans, probably the luckiest of my children because she cared the least about wrestling, consoled me for losing. Julie came back on the line and said she was sorry. I wondered whether she even knew what for. Sorry for the loss of income, or for how she treated me for the last year or two, or three, or four. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sometimes if it doesn't pay to read Brett's book out of order. Yeah. I loved her dearly, but as we talked, I couldn't deny that my heart was broken and empty. The next day, I flew to America and ended up at the usual Holiday Inn in Baltimore watching the match on tape in my room. There was a knock at the door, and I was surprised to see Randy Savage and Ric Flair come strutting in. Ooh. Randy grabbed my hand and told me, brother, that was the mother of all matches. Yeah. Flair said, Hitman, let me shake your hand. A couple of let hours. Your, let me get you a sea breeze. <laughs> And we talked about us. We can make fun of Luger. <laughs> Needless to say, Flair watched it in the robe and the buff. <laughs> um, you, you know, we, and, and just to close this, uh, this, this riveting excerpt from Brett's book, um, we talked about how amazing it is that we're already, we're just about to see the future come into relief with Brett and Sean being the future of the company by force, <laughs> by yes. circumstance, by serendipity. What do you know? A couple hours later, Shawn Michaels came by. He said he had heard I had a tape of the match, and he wanted to watch it, and so we did. He stared at the screen with a look of amazement, and when it was over, he stood up, shook my hand, looked me in the eye, and said, you are the best man. In fucking credible. Mm. Bret Hart on SummerSlam. 1992.